of you here good day to all our viewers as well uh, welcome to the main strategy session i have with me today uh, ms sharan uh, she has cleared the civil services 2023 exam with all india rank 322 welcome sharan thank you i also have with me mr krishna he has cleared this year's examination of civil services as well as forest services and uh, it's a double delight krishna congratulations thank you congratulations for uh, the all india rank 52 in forest services and uh, all india rank 444 in civil services thank you i also have with me today mr venkateshwaran uh, he has scored all india rank 152 in this year's examination congratulations and welcome thank you ma'am and we also have today mr vignesh ta he has cleared this year civil services examination with all india rank 314 welcome one and all and thank, thank you. you dear viewers for joining us today so let's start with a brief introduction about each of you so sharin why don't you start and then we can just take on the lead from there sure ma'am uh, hi i am mariana sharin uh, i hail from uh, tutukudi district down south of tamil nadu so i did all my schooling there and uh, post which for my uh, ug i came to chennai post my uh, graduation in engineering i took up a job with the city group uh, uh, global consumer technology for about 2 years and post which i started preparing for my civil services examination so this was my fourth attempt my third mains uh, my second interview and my first selection um, so there goes the number series and in the course of my preparation i also did my masters in business analytics from uh, liba so i graduated this october uh, 2023 and i secured uh, 312 22 uh, rank this year that that's all about me thank you sharan krishna over to you uh, ma'am my full name is krishna srivastav i am from anamaya district kadapa region of andhra pradesh uh, like many of us i am an engineer and then i came to preparation uh, this is my fifth attempt fourth means third interview first selection and including forest it will be second selection and i am currently serving in andhra pradesh government as district registrar good to know about that move on to venkat venkat can you please tell us something um, hello to everyone uh, my name is r venkateshwaran i have secured all india rank 152 this year as ma'am mentioned uh, have, um, my native is uh, kanyakumari district uh, tamil nadu Uh, completed my schooling 10th and 12th from uh, nagar koil uh, nagar district kanyakumari after that i did my bachelor's degree in civil engineering uh, in, from uh, chennai and also my after clearing gate exam i opted for master's degree in hydrogen water resource engineering and uh, completed graduated in uh, 2017 and uh, since 2020 i have been serving in the ministry of home affairs government of india and uh, for the past 6 uh, years i have been preparing and this is my first mains and first interview and probably expecting the indian administrative service hopefully and this is me ma ma'am over to you vignesh yes ma'am as uh, my my name is vignesh i am from chennai basically i did my schooling as well as graduation everything in chennai i am a uh, electrical engineering graduation and uh, i started my preparation in the covid 19 pandemic uh, it was my final year in the preparation i am in the graduation and since then i have been a full time preparation uh like i prepared for 3 years and this is my second attempt my first attempt uh, i reached thrill mains but unfortunately unfortunately couldn't clear there but in the second attempt fortunately i was able to secure uh, 314th rank ma'am so we have a very wide uh, uh, variety of uh, people who have cleared this year so we have uh, sharan who has a uh, post graduation in data analytics we also have uh, mr venkat who has his uh, masters in uh, uh, engineering we have uh, krishna who is uh, parallelly also working with the uh, uh, andhra state government in the group one cadre and we have uh, vignesh who was full time into preparation and uh, he was also giving his exams for uh, the tnpsc yes, group one as well when he got through in uh, civil services so uh, we have uh, uh, a wide variety of people who are into very degrees of preparation some of you have spent more than 6 years some of you you have uh, given some 2 to 3 years of time so can we just share our experiences today uh, to the viewers and to all the people who want to know about your main strategy so first of all um, what do you think is the difference between prelims and mains preparation ma'am according to me the first difference which i see is with respect to the syllabus because in prelims the syllabus is very concise you don't have a very elaborate syllabus so when you read a particular news article you wouldn't know when it will come handy in prelims but with respect to mains you have a very detailed and elaborate syllabus 
so it's like every keyword has an expansion to it so if you read an article or something you will know exactly where it falls in gs1 something related to disaster management uh, like a cyclone or something can come in gs1 under geography or can come in disaster management in gs3 so that detailed uh, approach uh, to preparation is there in mains but is a bit uh, missing in prelims and where it like uh, compensates for that is for prelims you need a superficial understanding for like a scheme if you are studying you just need to know the two major features like probably a prelims question will have two to three statements in the question so if you are able to grasp like okay this scheme this is the name this is the meaning so probably this will be it that level of understanding would be sufficient but for mains the same scheme you should be able to evaluate it its pros its cons the implementation challenges so that is where the major difference in study pattern between prelims and mains comes but it is core tangent also it's not like there is a clear separating mm-hmm. line between there is no melia code between prelims <laughs> and mains and all so like whatever facts you study in prelims you can probably use it in mains in your substantiation and the conceptual understanding that you have in mains comes handy in terms of economics or environmental questions which need a certain depth of conceptual clarity in prelims i think she gave an exhaustive uh, explanation i believe ma'am uh, adding i would say prelims is just knowing we have to know the concept and we can just uh, give it in the paper because it's an objective paper but when it comes to mains uh, i think we have to convey to the evaluator that we know it we can write it better than other people so uh, in my opinion mains is more competition because we have to prove that we are better than the previous person and the next person in the evaluation in prelims it is same for everyone because we are bubbling in the omr sheet i think that is the major difference for me apart from what sharan has said and when it comes to newspaper reading especially when, uh, prelims and uh, mains basically for prelims will be taking uh, a- anything which is falls under the sky can can be a syllabus for us because we'll be studying about many schemes new terms and then various other terms in the newspaper but when it comes to mains we'll be focusing on key issues and thematic areas what is the burning issue there what are the pros and cons of an issue and along with that we'll be scavenging for value addition points from the newspaper for example the data point which is given in the hindu can be a valuable uh, point when it comes to any economics or say polity paper and along with that every sunday there will be a case study of uh, any person creating as a change agent in the particular society we can use that example for ethics case studies and when it comes to editorial again not all editorial can itself become a question we can get just one point from one editorial added to a answer so it's all about thinking in the view of pyq as well as the syllabus so that we can integrate the current affairs notes to the static and revise it well better for the mains one thank you do you think there is any difference in the note making as far as the preparation of prelims and mains is concerned ma'am uh, for the first ma'am first question i will try i want to include something else ma'am the difference between uh, prelims and mains actually in prelims ma'am uh, they ask, ask around 100 questions so anyone should be well versed with the static subject which form, forms around 30 to 40% mm-hmm. of the uh, paper ma'am have beyond around 40 to 100 questions it uh, it discuss more elaborately about the current affairs so pre- with respect to prelims ma'am we have to be updated with respect to current affairs that is by reading more about the internet articles and also having wide amount of sources so that we can get a shallow amount of knowledge with respect to all the areas ma'am this is the first point with respect to prelims however with respect to mains ma'am we need more amount of depth information for as here the sources varies uh, here what we aspirants usually do is that uh, we used to watch uh, dd india uh, news analysis and apart from that we used to key the see the uh, key highlights that has been uh, discussed with respect to major uh, newspapers and also the pabs this makes our uh, answer writing to be more uh, analytical to be more structured so that we can give a better perspective of the uh, analytical type of questions ma'am so but the common thing between prelims and mains is that ma'am we have to limit the sources the second thing is that uh, we have to uh, do no more number of tests with respect to prelims and also with respect to mains so that we can get a better hold of answering the question within the span, uh, short span uh, span of time ma'am so we also wanted to discuss about uh, note making did you have any uh, different strategy for prelims and mains when it came to notes uh, certainly ma'am uh, with respect to prelims what i did was ma'am i have a, a, a different number of prelims and mains note so with respect to prelims after reading the newspapers as i was uh, earlier telling that around 50 to 60 percent of the question will be of, uh, will be from the current affairs that includes a static part of our general studies also i used to take uh, after reading any newspaper or any magazine or even any internet articles i used to write down the topic and i used to write down only the important facts and data because in prelims 
the fact and data forms an important uh, argument with respect to the answer selection however with respect to mains ma'am my notes making will more focus upon the uh, introduction conclusion and substantiate part for example with respect to introduction we have to we uh, give more number of uh, reports and also uh, give no more number of data for this Uh, getting the data from the newspaper or any other uh, government publishing documents it, it uh, deems more as, uh, like essential and with respect to other static parts like history and geography although we know on the current affairs giving a suitable number of uh, books or this or their any other histor- uh, historian or geographers arguments will make our answer more number of uh, like uh, uh, like uh, substantiation this forms a major part of uh, notes making with respect to G- sorry main answer answer, answer writing man did you Uh, did any of you have a, a, a digital kind of notes how did you maintain your notes uh, ma'am i had digital notes like right from the first preparation uh, the major advantage for me is the revision that you can do like you can search for a keyword like in budget you want saptarishi you want to just check all the seven uh, key terms together you have to turn over the pages you have to remember where you have written it but with digital that is very easy i used to use evernote and then it became very paid and all now we use an open source college joplin so you can have it in your phone you can have it in your laptop you can have it synced so that is one digital tool that i relied heavily on and like taking notes in ipad and all the next would be using uh, like i think now many aspirants they use chat gpt and uh, gemini and all in the course of their preparation but the thing that i would tell is i have also used to collect examples you have to be very uh, you know uh, particular in what do you want out of it and you also have to cross verify it in google or the static sources you have so that you will know exactly uh, if that particular place, place is renowned for organic farming or not so using all the tools is fine but that manual verification that we have to do that is always there so with regard to note making ma'am i have been using uh, ipad for quite some time uh, with regard to prelims i just read some current affair magazine and i'll make some important notes out of it when it comes to mains ma'am again uh, i haven't made elaborate notes what i used to do is i will take uh, last year answer copies of topos or model answers of academy uh, i will take any any one area for example for governance uh, i have very very elaborate notes uh, if i take self help group i have a definition i have what is a good thing bad thing what is government is doing and i have three to four very good examples so entire shg in one page that might not be possible if i'm doing it only in the paper and uh, i can add examples whenever i want uh, suddenly government comes with uh, ministry of cooperation i can include it wherever i want so in that way uh, online notes and as sharan mentioned the portability is very important ma'am uh, i can read it in ipad i can do it in phone i can do it in laptop i think in that way uh, that was very helpful for me yes ma'am to add uh, to what mr venkat and mr sharan said like uh, the note making when it comes to digital notes we can create a separation between prelims as well as mains ma'am for example in prelims it's all about uh, how much ever facts you can load and study you can do but when it comes to mains your mains answer writing structure itself evolves from the way you take notes for example if you are going to uh, uh, a conventional structure of a, a sub topic and a point to substantiate uh, ever since we start note making on one particular topic we can use that approach itself to st- start taking notes and also our notes should be very much limited such that our content is only limited for 150 or 250 words sometimes we uh, we overdo the notes such that uh, mm-hmm. we'll be running into pages and all and unfortunately we are not going to use all those notes in our content right and while writing the answer so we should be very much conscious while taking notes for mains and that is we, e- even more possible when it comes to uh, digital notes ma'am for example they just uh, as ms sharan said uh, there are topics which overlaps between gs1 and gs3 for example disasters so i'll be creating a separate uh, a word document for disasters and create a shortcut link keep it in the gs3 mm-hmm. module itself so while i mod- uh, while i modify this th- there is also the same modification there so that's how uh, i can e- uh, very much ease my revision as well as uh, things of searching integrating the current affairs and static is very much useful ma'am i like to add on one thing ma'am like what uh, krishna was telling in uh, similar to what he did ma'am what i was t- uh, i did the same thing like uh, for any social issue i used to have a separate sheet and although I, no, i did not use any technology i used only traditional pen and paper method so under any social issues i, I used to write down anything that comes in internet have a, having a wide number of substantiation because that forms of note making will be useful in with respect to the main sense writing at the end of the day in main sense uh, and question answers they ask only about 200 or 250 words so if you have a better art of making taking notes this will help us to consolidate our thoughts and ideas mm. and present in a better form while answering the main senses ma'am and also with respect to ma- uh, like notes taking 
இஃப் வி ரிலே ஒன்லி அப்போன் தி கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸ் மேகசின் ஆர் எனி அதர் ஆர் மெட்டீரியல் தட் இஸ் லைக் அவைலபிள் இன் தி ஓப்பன் சோர்ஸ் மேம் திஸ் ஹே திஸ் ஆர்டிகல் வில் பி அவைலபிள் டு எவ்ரி ஒன் ஸோ அட் தி எண்ட் ஆஃப் தி டே எவ்ரி ஒன் ரைட் த சேம் ஆர்குமெண்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் ஜஸ்டிஃபிகேஷன்ஸ் பட் ஹவ் எவர் இன் ஆர்டர் டு கெட் அ பெட்டர் ஸ்கோர் மேம் அவர் மே மெயின்ஸ் ஆன்சர் ஆர் சப்ஸ்டான்சியேஷன் ஆர் ரிப்போர்ட் ஷுட் பி யூனிக் ஸோ ஃபார் தேட் யூனிக்னஸ் வி ஹாவ் டு ஸ்டார்ட் ஆன்சர் ரைட்டிங் பிகாஸ் ஒயில் வி ஸ்டார்ட் டு ஆன்சர் ரைட்டிங் ஒயில் வி டேக் டவுன் அண்ட் நோட் வி வில் கெட் டு நோ தட் திஸ் பாயிண்ட் ஆர் திஸ் சப்ஸ்டான்சியேஷன் வில் பி ரிட்டன் பை எனி ஒன் ஸோ அட் தி எண்ட் ஆஃப் தி வில் நாட் டேக் தட் so we will become a thirsty to search for more number of uh, committees recommendation and this makes us to be u- more unique and th- this will make us to get a better mass with respect to all your topic good all right so uh, we are just at the uh, brink of uh, completing the preliminary examinations for this year so you were all in a similar situation last year isn't it true ma'am and many years even before that yes so what exactly was your mindset after giving the preliminary examination what did you do after coming out and how did you uh, kick start your preparation what was what was going on in your mind uh, ma'am in the previous attempts i didn't have another uh, like i was into full time preparation only until 2020 so that time what i used to do is once i came back like most uh, uh, people would have uh, given the mock keys or something so i used to like cross check it and like okay this is the score this is a cat on wall situation this was possible till 2020 i think uh, this attempt like uh, after that i had college submissions and all i came i slept and i started on that but one thing i observed was that this time in 2023 nobody was able to judge the cut off nobody expected such a low cut off so people who thought that you know i wouldn't clear had cleared and that's that 12 or 13 days they had lost so for anybody who's preparing for prelims irrespective of what your score is don't take the judgment call yourself until you see your roll number in that particular list uh, if probably you don't clear even then study that particular means that is the plan i always had like if this prelims uh, i didn't crack the 2023 prelims my aim was like if they are going to write the exams gs1 and gs2 on september 19th i will write it on september 20th i will learn mains with the same aspirants see that heat of the moment you won't get after september or october it is better you sit for that along with aspirants if not this prelims you are probably gonna write the next prelims so that kind of preparation will come in handy like all the notes making points everybody was telling by the time you would have a particular amount of notes with you the substantiation with you which you some part of it you can use it later because upsc is not only asking current affairs of that particular year they are asking something 2 to 3 years back also is reflecting the mains question paper and also that point is that uh, that prepare for mains no matter what comes take one or two days rest schedule the whatever how you are going to study and all and then just start your mains preparation so what did it was ma'am after uh, like uh, my first thing is after doing with the gs and csat paper first thing i should get out of the exam center because i know that there will be many aspirants who will try to discuss the answers everything they will spoil this entire situation so in any exam center when wherever i go i'll be the first one to take the take the bag and go out the first person i'll be the one now so after that i will go into a distant tea shop where there is no upsc aspirants and have a cup of tea chai and some vada or bajji like that after that i will go to my house just close all the doors will not attend any calls and i will wait till 6:30 ma'am because anyhow the examination keys will be started to be available from 6 to 6:30 but after 6:30 only a couple of good coaching institute will have a better key but over the years of preparation i understood that ma'am we have to wait for at least one week in order to have a better key because shangara is academy will have, will just post the uh, like accurate keys after on 2 to 3 days of the exam complete so so in this scenario whatever emotionally stable that after 6:30 i will just analyze my csat and also gs what is the like average score i will get but however i will not take this a final situation so after one week uh, or after 2 to 3 days what i will do is that ma'am if i get a hope that i will clear this uh, year's prelims i will just try to start the optional uh, like value addition preparation till the f- ap- like uh, end of uh, 15 days from the prelims exam because after 15 days the result will be announced so till that i will try to push myself in order to better my value addition with respect to the like optional my my, my option is geography so i will create my value addition with respect to geography ma'am krishna you yeah. waited for the results or you straight away started your mains preparation what was your strategy ma'am could you please repeat the question So I was wanting to know what you did after you completed last year's prelims. What yeah, was okay. running at the back of your mind? Okay, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, I have given five prelims, ma'am. Uh, last year it was different. 
because immediately after prelims i had my group 1 mains within 3 days after prelims so i finished prelims in chennai and i went to andhra to write the group 1 mains ma'am but in general ma'am uh, what i do is after completion of prelims 2 to 3 days i'll take proper rest and then i'll see if i clear the exam or not if i am clearing clearing the exam then i will see what i went wrong last year uh, next 3 days will be doing the post mortem i will see what is the uh, material i have revised last time what are the answers i have written and then i will meet the mentors and i'll take the feedback what could be done next so the next one week first 3 days will be rest and next 3 days will be knowing what to do for next 3 months that is what i do in general ma'am my preparation was quite outlier i would say that's because uh, just as you said in the beginning i was there in the midst of tnpc group 1 preparation so i was not even in the idea of giving this particular attempt uh, but only after knowing my previous year mains mark I, i knew that i missed the mains only by 15 marks so that gave me confidence to attempt to go for this attempt so that uh, uh, probably i would have been in the right uh, direction why not uh, why do waste this attempt just go and give it and then from uh, just when i came home i didn't even bother about looking to the key or about the mains preparation i just started my group 1 preparation again so my group 1 was till august and uh, till then or even i checked my key only after completing the upsc mains itself for uh, attending a session to other students because uh, uh, shankaray academy uh, i invited me to give a session to other prelim students so for them i checked the key before that i never even bothered to check the key so once i got the result even then i did not think of uh, uh, pr- preparing full time for upsc mains because i was uh, very much invested in the group 1 mains right so i prepared uh, till august and only in the last one month between august and september i just looked after the areas which are left out in group 1 preparation like ethics internal security and then i say and worked on those particular areas as well as optional to give this particular attempt and uh, i have cleared this attempt actually i think he is one of the unique persons who used to like uh, see the prelims keys after the mains exam <laughs> 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 how many hours do you think uh, is required for uh, mains preparation per day how many hours did you given sharan ma'am for mains preparation before like prelims like when you are doing prelims and mains together like the total hours that you can study in a day in my opinion dip, uh, differs from person to person and even for the same person differs from day to day you have very good days where in 8 hours you will be able to do more than in certain days only 3 hours you can do so uh, something that is very important is the consistency to keep going every day that is something that i would suggest but on an average 8 to 9 hours is something that i did my preparation with because with college and all i used to get 3 uh, days or 3 and a half days maximum completely for this preparation so close to 8 to 9 hours like uh, before uh, the prelims uh, got over but once the prelims got over and you are selected and all like every waking minute would probably be spent in mains preparation either directly or indirectly like if you are studying for 8 hours the remaining 3 hours when you are doing something else also i think most aspirants would relate like even in the back of your mind it will be like okay in this paper probably i could have written this uh, if you come across a news article or a poster or something okay what is uh, the mains thing something related to it will pop into your head you will start seeing lot of related items and all so i think after prelims it's like an every day every minute affair but before that at least close to 8 hours for people who are doing a full time preparation is something that can be done krishna did you also put in 8 to 9 hours of quality time or uh, more <coughs> or less than that my well, morning average i can say 8 to 10 hours uh but in the mm-hmm. attempt 1 and 2 because we have to read a lot of things we have to attend classes uh it will be more than 10 and when exam is very close for example 2 weeks before prelims we have to revise a lot of things it will be more than 10 again up to 12 it could be and again for mains it is same so down the line when we write more number of times this exam we know a lot of things already so it will take less so i would say on an average it will be around 6 to 8 hours for me vignesh Ma'am, uh, in my opinion, more than the number of hours which we spend, I think uh, what really matters is that that how how in what way do you spend those hours? Mm. Especially, it's all about quality inputs. How much ever hard work we put, if we put in a wrong direction, which is away from the syllabus, or uh, concentrating an area which is very much less asked in the PYQ, mm. then obviously your effort might not be paid off. So, especially uh, uh, when talking about Mr. Uh, Mr. Venkateshwan, who has been working while in the sense in the preparation. So, I have this doubt. Uh, I am a full time prepare. Uh, I am in a full time preparation. I worked for uh, more than eight hours, but he has studied only for three to four hours. 
if that is the case how can we bridge that gap it's all about utilizing the limited amount of us in a more productive way limit, uh, limiting the uh, distractions as well as putting our amo- uh, hard work in the right direction is always more important than the number of hours itself is what i think ma'am true uh, venkat i think uh, it must have been very tough in terms of giving quality hours for preparation because your work also is very demanding and preparation is also very demanding how did you manage that ma'am for me sir actually i have i should accept that it's a difficult situation ma'am because uh, before the mains examination i got only around uh, 30 to 40 days of uh, leave to prepare for my ex- like full time for my mains so before the mains like while i was working after the prelims result got uh, published ma'am i used to get around 3 to 4 hours per day so what i did was whatever happens i should not leave any mock test so i used to get that time like morning time i should write i used to write the test and submit with respect to shangrai is academy and i used to get the feedback and uh, other than that uh, if i used to get around 3 to 4 hours per day as he said ma'am the quality of the time that i use is uh, demands more rather than that the amount of time mm. and uh, with respect to working aspirants who are applying for in mains ma'am the saturday or the sunday when they get the full day period to prepare is the more uh, most crucial or the most uh, golden time ma'am in that sunday sat- or saturdays i used to prepare for around 13 to 4 uh, like 15 hours extensively because that ample amount of time will give me the enough scope to rectify the mistakes that i used to saw, like write test and get feedback uh, from the like weekdays from monday to friday i used to write test and get the feedback i used to rectify with respect to saturday and sundays ma'am so with respect to mains preparation if someone is working first solving the mock test with respect to the time that you are getting daily is the first thing and second thing using the uh, saturday and sundays efficiently to get the feedback done is the second most important thing ma'am so ideally what would i say is ma'am, ma'am what what i say is that if any working candidate gets around 3 to 4 hours per day during mains preparation and also getting like uh, uh, 10 to 15 hours per day with respect to saturday and sunday is like it is enough for someone to crack uh, like civil service because i use the same situ- i was in the same situation i got around 150 to rank this year so i am a perfect example for that ma'am ma'am i would like to clarify one thing here so uh, for people who are writing exam this year um there are many news reports saying that people study 15 hours 18 hours 20 hours uh, in one of the newspapers they wrote that i read more than 16 hours a day that never had it was never possible for me to read more than 12 hours a day so uh, people who are worried about this thing they should keep in mind that uh, the the amount of hours we spend it changes from person to person so they should not compare the other persons they should not compare the toppers i think they should compare whether they have achieved their goals for example if i read certain amount of certain amount of hours this week and if i am able to perform good in the weekend exam be it objective or subject to exam then it, that means i am doing good so it should not be comparing with other persons it should be comparing with what we want to achieve in the exam that is the amount of hours we should keep in mind i actually i accept that ma'am because uh, after getting a job i used to have a small motivation quote in my uh, uh, wall ma'am what says that uh, believe that uh, i am unique i have unique circumstances and should not compare with anyone else i should not think that everyone who are going for mains this year will have like better knowledge because they are giving more amount of time for preparation i believe that i am unique so my preparation should be unique so that i can compete with them like that ma'am i have to add to all this uh, something that has to go hand in hand with studies the quality of sleep that you are having like if you are going to put uh, 20 hours per day or something then you are probably cutting back on your sleep that is okay once or twice like i have to get this test series done once in a while that is fine but if you are going to do it on a regular basis your efficiency will drop the way you write answers will drop you will stop you know the memory capacity your memory capacity will reduce so hand in hand with how much hours you study having an adequate sleep of 8 hours is also necessary that is actually going to fuel the 8 hours or 9 hours of study that you are going to do so with study comes proper sleep also but no. however ma'am it's a luxury for uh, it's not a luxury that we can afford ma'am i used to sleep around 6 to 6.5 hours ma'am if i think that i i, I if i have, if i think that i should need take i need to take around 6 hours of sleep in order to wake up at 4 am i will just sleep for 6 hours because i know that i have to compete with other guys so my wake sleep time for the past 2 years is 6 to 6.5 hours major 6 hours ma'am because i know that i will come late to home at around 9 pm yesterday that's it ma'am so that it's a also thing, unique thing, only ma'am but unique thing. your 6 hours of sleep is quality sleep that that is enough for you to get the 
day through if i don't get 8 hours of sleep you should meet me that day so you need day will go very horribly so i need a solid 8 hours of probably with time like there are certain times when it comes to 7 hours also that is fine but anything less than 7 hours like the efficiency gets drooped and try to sleep in the night time hmm. many exactly. people many aspirants are sleeping in the mornings uh, for working professionals it might be okay because they have to study in the night and they will their sleep cycle is very different i think for other people they have to sleep in the night makes sense because uh, exams happen in the morning time exactly. work also happens in the morning time meeting up with people after clearing the examination is completely during the day time so the circadian rhythm also has to work in that way isn't it yes, so ma'am. practicing in that way that we have a proper study work hobby exercise and sleep schedule it's kind of very important to balance everything isn't it oh, yes ma'am actually we exactly. need to have a perfect uh, planning and time schedule for each and everything ma'am most particularly for working aspirants how many hours i should i sleep how many hours should i study and how many hours should of uh, preparation during the office hours i should allot for each and like paper uh, answering everything like brainstorming everything ma'am perfect long, short term and long term goals especially for working and uh, aspirants ma'am Did you guys enroll for any test series for main examination? And if you have enrolled, how did you utilize the test series? Ma'am, uh, actually, I joined a main storming test series during my first attempt in Shankar Ayer Academy, ma'am. Especially, it was very much useful when it comes to the key, because uh, every time when we write answers, we don't know everything when it comes to the particular question. So we have to gain more value addition points from the key itself. In fact, uh, it is a it is a true thing that for my ethics preparation, I gathered many uh, universal examples which I can use in many answers from the Shankar Ayer Academy key, and it was a ten page note which I used both from both of my attempts. It was my primary notes for, from which I developed my answer itself. And so is the case with essay, where you develop the skill of answer writing. It's not about only brainstorming, but it's an art of writing. So you have to write more and more, and uh, coupled with a quality feedback. Uh, like uh, one, what one can do is, uh, for from every feedback which he or she gets from a particular test series, he or she should jot down those feedbacks and study it once uh, before writing another test series, another test. So uh, those feedbacks should come into the mind just before we write our answers, so that we don't repeat our errors. So in this way, we will be able to uh, gradually develop our content as well as argument structure, madam. Uh, for me, ma'am, test series is all about discipline. so we have a proper schedule so it always keep me motivated to read and finish the exam so i am a person uh, who feels happy if i write the exam on time and if i get good feedback i'll be happy if i don't get good feedback i'll be sad so for me uh, it always give me discipline to follow that is the one thing ma'am and uh, continuing on what he said um, before writing the next test i always uh, see the feedback of last test and i, I keep it in mind too Uh, in, involve those uh, include those things in the next test so test series will help us to compete and also compare ourselves with other people and uh, by seeing the good answers of other people uh, we'll come to know what is the best that is happening in the market and we'll can include those things in our papers too. so it's directly uh, gauging ourselves and also uh, finding the ways how to improve that is how that is how i i have used it i'm adding to what vignesh and uh, krishna has said like the main test series or whatever that key that came with it i think that was a major boost to the preparation i'm like in my unique case i had a health issue post the first two mocks i wasn't able to give any uh, general studies mocks so what i used to do was i used to take those two questions write it and self evaluate but at that time what i used to do is i used to take this answer key for that evaluation and whatever points for substantiation that i've written in my uh, in my answer sheet i used to write it onto the key and i converted that key itself into a revision like material mm-hmm. so i had in mind like these three months i'm going to prepare revise and have that handy in a sense that the day before the examination or something that i can take it to the exam hall just half an hour if i want to revise something i wanted to create a material like that uh, be it for general studies optional or whatever it is i would advise that for every aspirant always keep your preparation concise like even in newspaper notes uh, uh, vignesh and venkatesh were telling keep it concise you can't use the entire information that is available to you so if you are to use the main test series try to use that and convert it into a revision like material if you are comfortable writing everything in the answer key into your own paper if you think that was beneficial for you go ahead with it but i thought like my points the points i have will be less when compared to the amount of substantiation in the answer key so used to write it there and used to learn all those examples re- revise them so have it as a revision material one more thing i would like to add here is ma'am adding on to what she said uh, 
the answer key which academy gives any academy for that matter it will be proper in the answer format we will have a proper introduction which can be directly by heart and can write in the exam and the points which they give it will be in proper order so instead of having our own notes sometimes we can't write everything in our notes so i used to just read the answer key i'll get a proper idea of what should be in introduction what should be in the conclusion i straight away copy it and write it in the exam in that way also it's very helpful as she said ma'am uh, with respect to mains test series ma'am i, I enrolled for uh, moksha 2023 and also 2022 and also 2023 ma'am uh, before i tell about the importance of test series ma'am one has to start daily answer writing because this is a stage one where has uh, which is mandatorily has to done by everyone so that they go for any other stages of uh, like developing the answer writing so in moksha like 2022 test series i was determined to satisfy three goals ma'am the first thing is uh, completing the paper the second uh, thing is ma'am structuring the answer with respect to the demand of the question understanding the various uh, keywords everything the third thing is that ma'am preparing concise material for all the gs papers and also option papers so that if i satisfy the, uh, these three goals I was sure that I will get around below 500 rank in that year. In Moksha like main series 2023 what I did was since I have prepared everything last year there was only two goals this year. The one thing is uh, to have a better uh, unique uh, answers with respect to all the topics. The first thing is that ma'am unique uh, amount of uh, facts data committees case studies ev- like uh, which are unique to my my answer and which was di- like uh, which makes my answer to be different from others the second thing is ma'am uh, targeting all india rank one because if you c- try to complete the previous stages what i told you earlier this will make your mind to feel like you have to bar yourself because you have done everything to get around 500 rank so this will make you that uh, this year i have to do something else different that will make me to get all india rank one so this is how the main test series has to be de- like uh, approached by anyone who are appearing for mains ma'am uh, another note which i have to add to other students who think that they can financially aff- afford for a particular test series the point is that uh, uh, just as uh, mr krishna said its test series brings us discipline the biggest mistake one uh, what one can do is skewed preparation whereas concentrating on one subject which is they think as very important or which they think as very much uh, close to our heart which is they like and not uh, uh, allocating enough amount of time to other areas in my opinion upsc is all about covering bare minimum areas across all subjects and that is very much possible for a test series so even one uh, one thinks that he, he or she cannot able to enroll at a series at least download the particular time table of the test series and t- state as a t- make it a schedule for a self study and uh, based on the test series follow that and just cut off the subject on that particular week and go for the next subject if we go on reading one subject because um, even after we all have cleared all these uh, studied all these years and clear this exam even we think that we are not adequately prepared on one subject so that is very much true in this particular exam so that is the case for every beginners too so it's all about limiting their preparation on one particular uh, subject and then allocating equal amount of time to all subjects that is by, by following the test, test schedule even if they don't enroll ma'am actually i i like to add on one thing ma'am we have to see the main test series at uh, to in order to better ourselves with respect to answer thing well, first thing is ma'am whether you study or not you, sh- you should not skip any mains test because it will make sure that although you have a def- deficit amount of inf- information with respect to a topic while attempting a paper it will create an art like we will try to incorporate whatever we know and also like bridging other sort of like various sectors incorporation it will make our skill development like is some sort of skill what like uh, we will try to answer what and all question if the, like, some sort of bouncer question we will try to develop a skill so that we can get a better answer ma'am so it will actually in order to get a better skill development of uh, answering a, like a deficit amount of uh, information with respect to the question we have to mandatorily attend the mock test series ma'am what do you think was very unique about your answers uh have you identified like maybe this is what i did better than my previous answers i worked in, in terms of differentiating my answers when compared to my previous attempts so do you have uh, what according to you has been that edge in your answer i'm comparing my 2020 preparation to 2023 because i had a break of 2 years so one thing that i wanted to work on was uh, like venkateshwaran said the ability to answer bouncers because everybody will be able to do the regular questions like you will also be able to write it i wanted to portray that i knew those bouncers then i could handle or manage them so opposite to what the general like people do is like they go and write when the question paper is given they write what they know very well first 
so this time i changed it what i did was i wanted to give the bouncers a very good look that whatever i found were bouncer questions in that particular paper i answered them first because the first one hour the brain is very fresh it is able to think a lot compared to the last one hour of the 3 hours exam uh, advertently or inadvertently a small amount of anxiety catches up on you in the last one hour when anxiety catches up on you your thinking capacity automatically decreases so that time you can write familiar answers even without thinking giving it a second thought but that is not the case for bouncers that was the first thing ma'am and second was paper completion by addressing these bouncers i was able to complete the paper as such because in the last when i was writing the known questions i could use a hub and spokes model and try to cover it as much as possible the third thing would be the consistency uh, i think the first point got addressed with this consistency like people have a tendency to write certain answers very fast in a bit of a bad hand handwriting that actually shows them that it was done in a bit of a hurry it was not properly uh, thought of or properly organized so ensuring that these three things got satisfied along with mandatory substantiation some map some example if not for all points at least in alternative points i try to push it it is difficult at times when giving substantiation i think every aspirant would relate to it but you just have to force yourself to give it at least in alternative points don't think that you have to write the perfect answer give whatever you can to that paper i think that made the difference this time krishna ma'am well, my first mains was in 2019 so when i used to write answers then uh i used to have very critical perspective of answer uh if something say question is on poverty i will write that government is doing nothing so and evaluators used to ask uh, do you want to work in government or no i said yes then you should be the person providing solutions not us so uh in that means i failed obviously and then ma'am i started writing daily answers then i understood that if i am writing problems i should be writing solutions so then i focused on daily answer writing every day i used to write one or two answers be it for gs or for optional so the basic thing i understood is in every question the demand of the question should be there they are asking uh, say what are you what is the good thing of the current developmental agenda you should be writing what is going good and we can also write what is the solution so that will come only when we practice more and more questions so i used to brainstorm a lot of questions i used to write answers and i used to have a peer feedback so doing that i understood that the question will have a introduction and the body and a conclusion if i am able to address these three things properly at least i will not be punished in the exam so that is my way of thinking and uh, one thing i disagree with her is in my per- in my perspective uh, i am not a person who is more inclined to completing the paper so for example in last two years optional i left questions in gs i left questions i feel that if i don't know the question completely i will leave the question so that that extra 4 to 5 minutes i'll get for other questions which i can write good so that is where i disagree with uh, sharon apart from that as everyone says uh, it's all about the skill of writing that comes only when you practice so there is a saying i think bleed while practice not in the war something like that i think only we practice will get better uh, for me ma'am uh, the first thing is ma'am i will always try to complete the paper so i used to strategize my answer writing and i used the platform of moksha main test series like that ma'am for me with respect to any perfect answer to make my answer unique there are various uh, stages the first step, uh, process is uh, in getting a good introduction getting a good conclusion and uh, making the body of answer to have a better substantiation with points and the third and the fourth one is that uh, having a uh, case studies uh, like uh, being a uh, if you are able to incorporate around 3 to 4 case studies in around 20 questions out of 20 questions the exam will feel that this candidate has a edge over other candidate this makes them unique as yes, uh, fifth one is that ma'am i used both uh, blue and black since my jo- option is geography where which incorporates more number of uh, diagrams maps flow charts everything ma'am i used to practice uh, both blue and black and i'm sure that uh, you can like uh, take me i assemble that i used both black and blue pens and i and I complete every all the papers even in ethics paper i used uh, both blue and black pens and i complete the paper before on 10 minutes itself actually so this makes my paper to be u- more unique because everyone uh, used the more more like we used the blue uh, ball pen pen whereas i used both uh, blue and black man and uh, other than that ma'am uh, the way of answering the with respect to introduction there are three types of introduction the first introduction is that ma'am giving a definition basic definition the second level of introduction is that trying to incorporate a committee and also fact with respect to that what i think that is that a better introduction is third one which is trying to incorporate the question with respect to current affairs so this makes the introduction more unique and more relatable with respect to the examiner and with respect to conclusion ma'am 
giving a more number of uh, punch line or a rate to current affairs will make the uh, completion of the answer in a better form so this makes my answer to be more unique ma'am so for this uniqueness you have to read the newspapers and also we have watched various uh, opinion videos for uh, to make this uh, answer to be more different with respect to other answers ma'am in the uh, second attempt of mine basically i worked on both structure as well as the content ma'am definitely in my first attempt i was deficit in content so that was worked upon but what i personally feel is uh, beyond even the content see since since is a subjective phase of the examination and one particular human is going to evaluate a paper definitely the readability of the content is forms a more crucial part than the content itself so whatever beautiful content we craft in our notes the presentable presentation is uh, plays a very big role so i focus more on presentation the way i which uh, write a point and then keep the keywords as a subtopic and substantiating again just as everyone to- told i i also had a validation notes for myself so that we can use those validation point in all the papers and just as mr venkateshwaran said uh, i also used black and blue pens not just uh, n- not for writing uh, things in black but just uh, use for underlining and even a use scale to underline uh, uh, once i completed the paper and uh, the structure itself plays a very big role in the time management of the paper itself uh, if we go on writing in paragraph and paragraph we might not compare we will not complete the entire page itself but in a point wise format with a better sub topic and topic structure we can complete the entire two or three pages as well as the full exam with 10 minutes to recheck to so that's one thing and also i have also worked on my handwriting because uh, my handwriting was not very much legible in my first attempt which i think uh, might might prove costly in my first attempt so this time i went to a handwriting class changed my handwriting in this 23 year old age and then again uh, focused on this so i think these all uh, played a very big role uh, in clearing this attempt ma'am ma'am i like to add on uh, with respect to with respect to my main sense writing ma'am the thing is core objective is that we should make sure that the entire 20 questions that we answer should not be homogeneous so in order to break the homogeneity we try to incorporate multiple color pens and also flow chart as she uh, said hub uh, and smoke model uh, like uh, incorporating case studies so that our entire papers look uh, somewhat attractive and also encouraging to the evaluator to like correct us correct our paper so this makes them to like uh, give us more marks so you have as they say ma'am seniors used to say when we makes the life of the examiner more easier he will grant us more marks will which, which makes our life to be more easy ma'am ma'am to add on to that only one thing i disagree is that people who have good speed of writing can adopt that uh, two color method or something or else if you think that you your speed is not up to the mark even use blue ink but underline underline the keywords that will actually help me i never use two color pens in this uh, preparation but i used to underline the keywords what is important organize the answer accordingly and one more thing that i add to krishna is whatever he said no the more you sweat in peace the less you bleed in war daily answer writing actually plays a major role in improving your scores when you do something on a day to day basis you get a chance to correct yourself on a day to day basis so you have received a feedback one week back and uh, the next week you want to show an improvement you can work on it that entire week instead of going and writing that entire 3 hour test after a span of one week doing an everyday practice will uh, put you in tune with the preparation ma'am actually daily answer writing is very helpful in that manner true ma'am for example ma'am like uh, around one week back uh, i actually started my daily answer writing and uh, in 2019 so one week back uh, i just uh, saw my uh, daily answer writing note with respect to ias parliament my introduction was around five lines so so half the uh, first half page was my introduction i was i felt very bad and was like laughing but actually that helped me to stage up my uh, answer writing skill that made me to get a better answer writing strategy with present day ma'am so that help us to analyze our strength and weakness ma'am one last addition ma'am Uh, with regard to introductions uh, i generally follow introduction as definition model and contextual model so i believe there should be mix of both uh, for example if question is very straight or very static we can go for a definition based intro if it is a current affairs question or there is any major thing happening in the recent past then we can go for a contextual intro that is one thing i would like to add ma'am apart and also ma'am same applies to conclusions for example some people go on writing same thing in the conclusion sdg way forward uh, i mean sdg is as way forward so it should be mix of everything no single thing is uh, relevant we have to mix everything so that uh, as they said the homogeneity should be broken for every question so what i am able to understand from each of your inputs is that uh, monotonity breaking the monotony of answers ensuring that there is a kind of variety that is portrayed in terms of its presentation and trying to address the context of the question and giving relevant points 
ensuring that uh, these points are mentioned in a coherent order so that it is uh, readable and pre uh, it is understandable to the evaluator and ensuring that like um, there needs to be a proper way of entering an answer with an intro having succinct intros having a proper body with n number of points and substantiations complementing these things with uh, diagrams or flow charts or data points wherever necessary and wherever possible so that each of the points gets substantiated and it looks like it is not a superficial level answer there is a detail orientation in the answer and then exiting from the answer with a proper conclusion like they say it's important that there is a proper climax for every single movie similarly every single answer should exit so that and uh, conclusions as you mentioned it shouldn't be simply for the name sake kind of conclusions it should be to conclude the context of the question or the the sense of the points that are mentioned in the uh, in the body of the answer this is one thing that i was able to get the second was uh, we've had people who have used two colors we've had people person who has used only one color it depends upon the speed of the writing uh, at the end of the day addressing and completing the paper with good quality uh, answers is very essential so if it is possible try to balance if it is not at the end of the day we should not miss the eye on the goal that we have to complete the paper with quality answers yes ma'am so for that either two color pens or a single color pen whichever suits the context it is essential and we've all agreed that uh, the presentation is quite very vital and in presentation we focus about the legibility or the readability of the answer to the evaluator so that they are able to get what we are kind of mentioning so i think uh, this is what is uh, a yes, succinct uh, um, it's a kind of a gist of what you guys have mentioned all right so yes, we'll move on to the next set of questions i always see essay as a movie man i feel in case if an aspirant is someone who gets easily disturbed by sound or like external factors something i would suggest is... sometimes they won't allow certain kind of watches once i went to exam they said this water bottle is not allowed